Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations in two variables. We have two equations and two variables, so that should be solvable, right? Hopefully. We have AB divided by A plus B, and that's equal to 2. We have AB divided by A minus B, and that's equal to 6. So how do we go about solving a system like this? Systems of equations are actually pretty interesting because they usually allow for multiple solutions, which is something that I like. You probably know if you been following my channel for a while. If you haven't, then go ahead and check it out. I have a bunch of videos on different topics. I also have another channel which focuses on complex numbers and it's called A plus BI, just like a complex number. Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in multiple ways. First of all, when you see a problem like this, what is your first thought? I want you to kind of write down, okay, this is what I would do because Depending on how many problems you dealt with, uh, you know, everybody has a different, you know, type of background, the way of solving problems. But the more you see these kinds of problems, the better you're going to get. And of course, another way to learn more is asking questions. So I always encourage my viewers to ask questions in the comments or in the posts. Okay. And I probably haven't made a post in a while, but anyways. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from different angles. First of all, I noticed that both of these equations have a, b in them. So can I use that to my advantage? Such as maybe isolate a, b and set them equal to each other or divide these equations side by side, right? Okay, let's try that. So if you do cross multiplication, I'm going to call this first method. And I'm going to try to come up with at least two, maybe three. And just cross multiply a, b becomes two times a plus b. And from second equation, AB becomes 6 times A minus B. Here, you can either divide these equations or set the AB's equal to each other. It doesn't really matter. No big deal. But this will be 2A plus 2B. And that's the question. 2B or not 2B, right? Sorry, I had to say that. 6A minus 6B. Now, since both of these are AB, in other words, if two things are equal to the same thing, then they are equal, right? So, we can now say that 6a minus 6b is the same as 2a plus 2b. That basically gives us a ratio of a to b, right? If you put the a's on the same side, you're going to get 4a, and then add 6b, you're going to get 8b. Of course, this can be simplified and written as a equals 2b. Sorry, it came up again, 2b or not 2b, what can I do? It wasn't intentional, by the way. So a equals 2b is a good formula that can be used. But that doesn't give us the values of a and b, though, does it? No. It just gives us a relationship that's much better than what's given initially. So we can go ahead and use this information to solve for a and b. How? By substitution. Which one should we use? Doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter if your solution is consistent. So let's take that first one. A, B divided by A plus B is equal to 2. Now, to use this information, all I have to do is replace A with 2B everywhere. Where, is, where do we have A? We have an A here and we have an A here. Let's do it. So 2B times B divided by 2B plus B equals 2. Awesome. Now, B times B is B squared, so that'll be 2B squared. But guess what? I like to simplify things. I like to cancel out things. I always use cross-canceling. So why don't we just go ahead and get rid of these twos early on? And this becomes a 1 now, which means the numerator and denominator are the same thing. This is 3B. So B squared is equal to 3B. How nice. Now we can go ahead and this is quadratic, but it's a nice quadratic because we can put everything on the same side and easily factor this equation. How? We can factor out a b. That'll be b times b minus 3 equals 0. And then from here we get two solutions, don't we? Think about it. The product is 0, so each factor can be 0. I'm not saying must be, can be. Okay? So from here we get b equals 0. From here we get b equals 3. Uh-oh. Houston, we have a problem. What's that problem? If b is 0, then we get the following. A times 0 divided by A plus 0 equals 2, which means 0 equals 2. As far as I know, 0 does not equal 2. Correct me if I'm wrong, but B equals 0, unfortunately. Maybe fortunately, who knows? Does not work. Okay, so what should we do? Just proceed with B equals... Do you think B equals 3 will work? You can test it out. I mean, 
wait a minute, do we know the value of A though? No, we don't, but we can find it easily. Look, A is equal to 2B, so A is going to be 6 if B is equal to 3. So, so now you have an ordered pair of values, right? A is 6, B is 3. Does that work here? Let's test it out. 6 times 3 divided by 6 plus 3 is 18 divided by 9, which is 2. Yay, success. And if you test the second equation, you'll notice that it also works. By the way, if you've seen this type of problem before, you probably recognize this pattern, but we're going to talk about this a little later because that's going to be another method. But first method focuses on isolating A, B, just to summarize, and then setting them equal to each other, finding A in terms of B or vice versa, and then substitution, quadratic, and solve for it. But you always need to check because these are rational equations. You've got to make sure you don't make the denominator zero or something crazy. And we'll, I'll show you why B equals zero causes a problem. You'll get a better idea when I talk about the second method. Ready? Okay. Here's the second method. So let's rewrite the system. This is a three. Oops, I meant two. And this is a six, right? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and flip this. And you might be questioning like, why on earth would you do something like that? Guess what? This is not separable, but if I flip it, it'll be separable. Okay, let's flip both sides. In other words, this is what I'm trying to say. If A equals, well, I shouldn't use A and B in this case. If X equals Y, great. If X equals Y, then 1 over X equals 1 over Y. Of course, provided that X and Y should not be zero. Uh-oh, okay, that gave us an idea, right? But if you flip both sides, you get the following, right? If this is equal to 2, then its reciprocal is equal to 1 half, of course. But here's the thing. If you separate these, what do I mean by separate? Like this. This is like the sum of two fractions. Can you see that? It's like A over AB plus B over AB, like a very elementary approach. But of course, you want to simplify this. So in other words, this is 1 over B plus 1 over A, and that's equal to 1 half. And you're like, so what? Okay, now take a look at the second one. The second equation gave us A minus B over AB equals... Wait, it didn't. Never mind. Back, back up. I take it back. So the second equation gave us AB over A minus B equals 6. But from here, I want to get A minus B over AB equals 1 over 6. And guess what? This is separable again. 1 over B. Do you see that? A is cancel out. 1 over B minus 1 over A equals 1 over 6. Along with 1 over B plus 1 over A equals 1 half. This is going to be an awesome system. Why? Because we can directly eliminate. Take a look at this. Beautiful, right? 1 over A cancels out. We get 1 over B plus 1 over B, which is 2 over B. Not 2B, but it's close. 2 over B equals 1 over 6. This is 3 over 6. So that's 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. And from here, ta-da, 2s cancel out. B equals 3. How do you find A from here, though? With this method, it's a tiny bit uh, painful because we don't really have a magic formula like B equals 2A or A equals 2B, but uh, we, we need to kind of substitute it. But that's not no big deal. Uh, you can use the second one, maybe. 1 over B plus 1 over A is 1 half. And from here, 1 over A is 1 half minus 1 third, which is 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6, which is 1 over 6, which means A is equal to 6. Awesome. We got the same solutions. Are those the only solutions? Probably, because we haven't found any other solutions. Remember, zero failed. And why did it fail? Because of the reciprocals. Look, if B is zero, you get 1 over zero. Uh-oh, that's infinity, but that's not a number. Too bad. It's undefined. Some people call it undefined. Whatever. Infinity. But you're not going to get a valid, real solution from uh, this equation. If B is zero, we have a problem, okay? So, what about a third method? Um, I haven't really thought of any other way to do this, but you could probably think of something, uh, I don't know, maybe after cross-multiplying, uh, you can do this. Uh, you can go ahead and... Okay, one way to do this is, if, if you add these two equations, do you think that would help? Probably, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But you can do this after cross-multiplication. Um, you know what? I don't think that's going to help a lot. It's the same, same idea. Anyways, I can come up with the, the third method right away off the top, but you let me know if there's another way to approach this problem because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care.
Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.